Hi guys, welcome back to Fix Lab, and this is episode 2 of the 30 days of Flutter and today in this episode we're going to be covering platform and tools set up right so we're going to be setting up our IDs and other tools that we actually need to actually run our Flutter development so first of all today we're going to be focusing on installing Xcode and other IDs like Android Studio and VS Code these three tools are the tools we can actually use to develop our Android and iOS in Flutter right uh, how do we do that we're going to head up to the Xcode URL so if you go to the description you're going to find the Xcode URL. There's two ways you can actually download that from the web. If you click on the link on the description, you can find it's going to take you to developer.apple.com forward slash Xcode and you can click on download. And then for your machine, depending if you're running on Intel or you're running on the M1. And then if you are actually not on the browser, you could also use the App Store link. It's also linked in the description. So you click on it, it's going to open your App Store and then you can be able to download as well. So if you click on the download, it's going to probably take 12 gigabytes of space on your machine. So you should be able to actually reserve such space for Xcode because Xcode takes a lot of time to download. So if you have a relatively good internet uh, connection, then you should be able to download in no longer time. But if you don't have, they can pause the video and take time and download. And once you've downloaded that and it's installed, then you're going to continue in the video. So the next chapter, we're going to be talking about running this command. If you actually have already installed your Xcode and you need to run this to actually configure the command line tools that works with Xcode. So how do you do that? Because I already have Xcode, you can see that I already have Xcode in my machine and I've actually done all the installations that I need. As you just downloaded that, you need to run this particular command first launch kind of it tells the computer that this is the first launch so it's going to set up the S code with the command line so, so you do what you need to run is sudo xcode select dash switch application so you're going to open this and then it's going to run sudo xcode build dash run first launch so this is going to actually link your S code with the command line source and then make sure to also accept all the licenses in case if there's a license you've not accepted you it's a an opportunity to actually accept that at that process and then if you still get issues about licensing then you can also do a pseudo xcode build dash license to know if there's any licenses that you've not actually accepted so they can actually accept that and once you've done that then we're going to go to the next phase the next phase is uh, being able to set up our emulator so if you've actually done the xcode Let's go comes down with all the things that we need for our simulators, right? Simulators, that's actually one of the things that makes the uh, download size to be very large because simulators are kind of large files and comes with different variants of the devices that you actually might want to use in testing. So uh, go ahead and type in your terminal open dash simulator, just like I did now. So you can see it's going to open up our simulator right here. So if you have an issue with that, make sure you, that you actually installed everything that you need to install. If you don't have everything installed, then this command might not really work for you. So, but if you have everything working, then you can see that opening your simulator is going to show up on the screen like I have right now. Then if you have your simulator coming up, then that's fine. Then we can go ahead and create our first Flutter project. This is just going to be to be able to test that our app runs on the, the simulator. Like we've actually uh, been able to set that up. Our simulator is showing up and then we can be able to test that this App can launch on the simulator so what do we do we need to call flutter create this is where what we did in the previous episode we now come to you so if you've not actually watched the first episode where we did the flutter installation and setting up the parts variables they need to watch that part it's one of the most important part of this very of series so if you don't have that already if you have all this setup already then there's no issues then you're going to wait so right now i'm going to run flutter create to create just a test application we can run on the screen to see how how that works so you can see running the command filter create and then the name of the app so once you do that it's going to actually deploy that to our machine and once we do the deployment on the machine after the project has been created and it's running all right run flutter run on the terminal and then you should be able to see that your app launches with the default application that comes when you create a flutter project we're going to walk through that particular application in the next episode but let's continue to the next phase so having tested that we have actually been able to install our xcode and we've been able to launch our flutter app on the simulator that's the iphone simulator let's go ahead and go to the next phase of installing our android studio so we're going to install android studio next all right so android studio is the next thing you need to do so if you click on the link on the description you're going to find where we linked android studio installation that's going to link you it's going to take you to android developer.android.com forward slash studio 
that's where our Android Studio is located. So you can actually click on download. And after it's downloaded, you can actually launch the installation process. So and make sure you actually accept all the command line tools and SDK build tools that actually prompted. It's very important that you check the build tools. They are one of the things that you actually need to actually develop your Android apps, right? So once you have that accepted license, then you can go ahead and download. So I'm going to give you some sh short time to actually do an installation because it's going to take a few minutes to install all the necessary SDKs and tools. And once you've done that, there's one more thing that we need to do to make sure our Android Studio is going to run perfectly well without issues because Android Studio is not that complicated like Xcode would be. So let's do that next. So let's head to our uh, Android Studio preferences. So if you go to preference from Android Studio, you go to plugin and then you head to marketplace. If you see marketplace is actually where you can actually find other plugins that you need to install to support your Android Studio application, all right, to enhance the application that you actually use to develop your apps. Could be native Android developer, it could be Flutter developer. So for right now we're going to install two plugins. The first one is Flutter. So it's such Flutter, type Flutter in the, in the, in the search field like I'm doing now, we're going to find Flutter and then you install it. I already have that installed and I also backspace that and type uh, that and install that. Uh, I already have that installed, you can see. Then if you've done the two installations, just need to restart your Android Studio. So if you install your, uh, restart your Android Studio, then you should have that installed and then uh, it's going to actually ask you to um, set up the SDK, the location of the SDK. So you're going to point it to the same location where we kept our SDK, which is for my own case, I kept it in the uh, document, DevTools, Flutter, right? So you're going to point it to the right direction so that Android Studio should be able to pick the path to the, that SDK, all right? Once you've done that, then you're ready to use your Android Studio. So if you look at mine and see from what I have here, that this is the basic thing you need to do. Just head into your preferences, from click on Android Studio, you could click on that, all right? So you can see once you have these two installed, then you have everything ready. And then we should have a Flutter SDK located. So once you create, once you want to create a new project now on Android Studio, you go to new and then new project, then you should be able to find an option to create new Flutter project. All right, that, that means that it's been able to pick that up. And if you don't have that, then it means that the plugin is not installed very well. And then when you are trying to onboard a new Flutter project via Android Studio, it should also ask you the location of the dev tool. So you should be able to point to where that uh, SDK part is. So if the SDK part is missing, it's going to show you on the new Flutter project um, flow. All right, and that's it. Uh, for this one and then the next thing we're going to be doing is installing that on our VS Code which is quite simpler uh, almost the same thing we did for our Android Studio is what we're going to be doing so just head to the next link which has VS Code uh, if you don't want to use VS Code then it's okay you can skip but the same thing is just optional so depending on the, Android, the particular ID that you want to use then you can actually use that so we head up to the link VS Code is linked in the description once you click on that it's going to take you to uh, code of Visual Studios.com and you're going to download Visual Studio Code so once you download that, make sure you click and install the editor, and then launch the editor. Once you launch the editor, just like I have, you can see, then you can see that we have a blank screen and we can go straight up to our, as our editor is up, just go to um, views, sorry, view, if you go to view, click on command palette. Command palette is going to bring up a kind of search field, right? So you type install. As when well, you type install, you're going to find an option select extension. So you're going to find that. So you click on view, click on command palette and type install and select uh, extension, install extensions. All right. So once you select that, like you can see, then it's going to bring up the extension tab. You can actually see that there's an extension tab at the left of the IDE now. So you can type the flutter on the search field. So when you click on, when you type in flutter, you're going to find a different uh, so uh, kind of listings, anything related to Flutter, so just like you can see on the screen now. So once you have that all click on install, install Flutter, the one that has specifically Flutter on it. So you can see I already have that installed in my own case. So but if you type in Flutter, you should have an install option. But if you have already installed that, you're going to see like a cog or a settings icon. So I already have that installed. So you're going to install uh, Flutter. And then also install that. Uh, these are like plugins specific to uh, extension specific to uh, uh, VS Code, right? So once you install those two stuff, then you are done. And then you can close the ID and just relaunch it just to be sure that everything was installed very well. So once you do that, then go back up to the command palette, just like you did view command palette, and then type in uh, doctor. 
As you're typing in doctor, you're going to see flutter colon run flutter doctor, and then you're going to select that from VS Code. And once you do that, it's going to actually initiate flutter doctor. This is just like the issuing the command flutter doctor we did uh, when we're trying to do that for uh, for VS Code, right? So once we actually you know, remember in the first episode where we installed uh, flutter, right? We did a command that we actually used to create our flutter project, the one we use in testing. So if you run flutter doctor from the SDK uh, from the uh, ID here, you will actually see that you're going to have the same effect. So if this does not work, then you need to uh, go back to the video and watch it again and see if there's something you're actually missing out. Then if there's still something that is not uh, working as it's supposed to be, you can leave a comment in the comment section. I'm going to actually attend that and someone else that probably have been able to set it up will be able to help. And I also will be willing to help. And you can also shoot me a DM on the on the Twitter account on the description and I will be able to also assist you. So if you've actually get to this point, then you've actually done uh, a lot and uh, I'm happy that we've actually gotten to the point where I'm ready now to actually start getting into the nuts and bolts of building our Flutter app. So make sure if you're actually on this particular episode and you actually missed out something from the initial ones, then you should also go back to that uh, particular episode. You can see that it's also in the description and also at the end of this video. So you can actually use that to head to the video and watch it and you'll be in sync. And if everything is done then let's head up to the next episode and we're going to start building our apps see you guys